If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at cottageblogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello again. Welcome to episode number 52 of Vacation Rental Success. This is going to be a this this is an episode I've been waiting to do for ages because my guest today is my my friend, my mentor, advisor, trainer. Cliff Ravenscraft taught me has taught me everything I know about podcasting and it was such a delight at the podcast movement conference in Dallas in 2000 uh, earlier this summer when um, I spent a day with him in a mastermind and then asked him at the end of the conference if he would do me the honor of coming on to the show and talk to and talk to you about podcasting uh you know the, the impact of podcasting on the world really and how his experience of being a podcaster for nearly 10 years now has given him so much to share and share he really really does so that's coming up in a in a few minutes of course you know that i can't kick off any episode without a little discourse on the weather and and here we are middle of november and we are in a winter wonderland and my heart goes out to all those folks south of the border south of niagara falls in buffalo oh my my goodness you people have had such a tough time of it uh, over the past few days. And, you know, we, we've been watching on our news as the snow has just been piling up and up and up. And now we've got, uh, I mean, I'm looking out of my window now and it's beginning to rain. The temperature's going up. So, you know, I hope everybody down there um, is going to be able to cope with the aftermath of the snow and and the flooding that apparently is coming your way. So, you know, good luck, guys. You're a tough bunch down there, and I know you're going to cope with it um, wonderfully well. Uh, it was interesting. I was I was talking to um, my friend Andy McNulty from VacationInsiders.com the other day. We had a quite a lengthy Skype discussion, and it, and it is you need you need to be fly on the wall or or fly in my earpiece to uh, to listen to an expat Brit and a Brit, an expat Brit in Canada and a Brit talking about the weather. You know, it gets very competitive. He's telling me how much it's raining in England and I'm telling him how much it's snowing in Canada. And we're it's this little sort of competition about who's got the crummiest weather at the time. <laughs> so that's it. That's my weather forecast in uh, in a few weeks time. Well, just a few weeks after after Christmas and in the new year, I'll be heading off to uh, to the Caribbean for 10 days. And I can't wait for that. But it uh, it seems like this winter could be a very, very long one. So business is uh, relatively slow at the moment. We're beginning to ramp up for 2015. The bookings are actually coming in quite well at the moment for summer 2015. So we really won't ramp up fully until probably just in the middle of December. And then it goes quite a little bit around about Christmas time. And then it will it will we'll just go full blast into summer bookings as soon as we get into January. After I did my last podcast about the 12 things that you should never have in a vacation rental, there were so many comments on the on on the show notes. If you haven't actually listened to that podcast or you know just just go over and have a look at the show notes and and check out the comments because there's some really good ideas coming out of that. And people sort of recognizing that there's some things that weren't on the list that perhaps shouldn't be in their vacation rental either. Um, we also got into a bit of a discussion about cleaning stainless steel pans, which um, don't quite know how we got there, but uh, but that, that's quite interesting too. There's a really good tip down there. So thank you to everybody who does make a comment on the show notes. I love that because it it's the one thing that, that shows to me that my message is getting out there and some and you are out there listening to me because you know you could be in your car out on a walk on a hike taking the dog for a walk whatever you might be doing uh, i know that uh, a number of my listeners will listen while they're on the treadmill or a stairmaster but i don't know that unless you tell me and i really love to hear that that you're getting something out of all this 
So, you know, thank you. Thank you to all those who who posted those comments on uh, the show notes for episode 51. It was it was so great to hear from you. So I don't want to uh, delay any more before I go over to the interview with Cliff, but just to give you a little bit of background, uh, Cliff Ravenscraft has been um, in the podcasting business since 2005. We're putting a link to his websites on the uh, show notes. Cliff began podcasting in 2005 and just began it as a hobby. He had absolutely no experience in in broadcasting at all. No radio, TV, nothing. His first show was about the TV program Lost. And what happened was that Cliff's wife, Stephanie, Uh, enjoyed the show so much. She introduced Cliff to the show. And after watching the first series, he decided to launch a podcast based on the show. And it was incredibly successful. And up to 2010, when the finale of Lost was uh, shown, they had over 50,000 subscribers and there were in excess of 260 episodes about the show. Um, Since then, Cliff's broadcasting company, GSPN, has produced numerous other shows, one of which is, is the one that I subscribe to every single week, which is called Podcast Answer Man. And I rarely miss an episode of Podcast Answer Man. And there are now, in fact, the latest... The latest episode, which was published on November the 20th, was episode 381. Now, that is going some. Now, add that to all the other podcast shows that Cliff has launched, uh, along with his wife, Stephanie, who's had her own shows and they've done shows together. Um, Another very, very popular podcast by Cliff, which is called Pursuing a Balanced Life. That one uh, has now reached episode 584 which is is quite phenomenal. Cliff is clearly a master of podcasting. He understands the business inside and out. And he was, of course, the person that I wanted to have on this show to tell you a little bit more about how podcasting can bring huge value to us in the vacation rental business. So one thing I just want to mention before we kick off with the interview, and it, was, it, it made me laugh, and we did have a little bit of a laugh after the interview, because Cliff, you'll, you'll hear Cliff mention bed and breakfasts a lot. Um, he's using bed, you know, bed and breakfast as an example. And it was uh, after we'd, after we'd uh, done the interview, and I realized, you know, in, in, in the post-interview discussion that we were having, that Cliff actually hadn't, he's never stayed at a vacation rental and he, he wasn't aware that there was a difference between vacation rentals and bed and breakfast. And it really came home to me actually that, you know, we can be so immersed in our own business that we totally forget that there's a huge proportion of the population who don't know what we do and what our type of accommodation is. So we need to be very, very aware of that, particularly when we get first time uh, first time guests coming to our place. And I, I've mentioned this in a previous episode about the guests from Saudi Arabia who arrived at a property, one of our managed properties, in fact, and then called us at seven o'clock after they arrived to say, well, they were there and it was fantastic and they loved the place. But where was the food? And so they had absolutely no idea what to expect with a vacation rental. They just understood that it was it was they had to cater for themselves but they thought that all the food would be provided for them to do their own catering. So it's definitely worthwhile um, remembering that. And uh, so so every time Cliff mentions bed and breakfast uh, in the interview, we can easily insert, you know, vacation rental because it's uh, it's easily interchangeable in the course of, of of this episode. Cliff provides some really, really great information right the way through Um, He shares very freely of his knowledge and he has some terrific ideas on things like how we can monetize a podcast, how we can use advertising and go out to some of the local suppliers and get them to advertise on our podcast. And, uh, And he also comes up with quite a unique take on podcast topics for vacation rental owners and agents as well. So 
Without further ado, let's get on with this interview. I want to give a massive welcome to Cliff Ra Ravenscraft, a.k.a. the podcast Answer Man. It's a huge honour to have you as my guest on Vacation Rental Successor. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome, Cliff. Well, thank you, Heather. I am so honoured to be here, and I'm glad to not only say that uh, you are a student and a, and a client, but now I can actually say that you're a friend that I've met in person that I love dearly. Well, that was an amazing time we uh, I had at your next level uh, mastermind in Dallas, uh, the podcast movement. It was it was just just such a great day. I learned so much from it. So, uh, you know, you'll probably be here. It's just seeing a lot more coming out of me that came out of that day. So, uh, kudos to you for getting that off and running. Well, but I'm excited about what the what all the you have your hands in. It, it looks like some <laughs> amazing things, and you're gonna help some people achieve even greater success in their vacation rental businesses. Yep, there's a lot of stuff going on. So, Cliff, you're my inspiration. You really are for so much of what I do on this podcast, whether it's interviews or a solo episode or even in the way the equipment is set, my equipment set up. And I've, I've told so many people about the diagrams that you supplied uh, when I did the A2. And I'm th this, is, this is my way of, of saying it, the A to Z course. Yes, it's not an A to Z. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah. So, you know, I refer back to that material probably several times a week. And, you know, considering it was over, well, nearly two years ago now that I did the course, it says a lot for the quality of it. So I want to come back to that a little bit later. But for now, I want to talk about podcasting itself because the majority of the vacation rental success audience, they're either owners or of individual properties or they're agency owners. And it's a massively, hugely competitive business. And one of my recent guests suggested that there were probably over five million and he called them micro businesses around the world. So that's, you know, individuals out there who are renting out their homes and their biggest task is to be heard above the noise, you know. Everybody's out there competing for for the guests who are you know the travelers, right? And one of the ways to do it is to become a local expert, and they can do this in a lot of ways. And I've you know I've talked to them in the past about blogging and about using social media, but what I'd really really love to see more of them do is to launch podcasts. And I figure if I did it, anybody can do it. So I just want to kick off with asking you, you know, about your take on podcasting. What's the state of podcasting today? Because I know, and it was interesting, I went and cleared out a, a cupboard, a closet the other day, and I found a mixer that I had bought in 2006 from Radio Shack. <laughs> and with that mixer was a book that said how to start podcasting and an old microphone. And I remember thinking back in 2006, because I'd heard about this medium, that I wanted to do it. But I was so daunted by all the technology that I never did it. So, you know, I know it goes back to that time because I was interested in it then. So so what's your take? Is this still a good time to start a podcast? It's an excellent time. And actually, it's the best time to start a podcast. And I'm not just saying that. I'll explain. So podcasting started in mid-2004, really started taking off mid-2005. I personally started podcasting in December 2005. And back then, the only people who really could who really could create a podcast uh, were people who were extremely geeky and technical. It was it was a whole lot more difficult than it is today. Uh, many of us were hand coding the RSS files, and and of course, this is just a special code that you had to write into a text editor and and create this thing called an XML document. Really geeky stuff. And today. No podcaster really has to worry about that at all. Um, and not only that, but not only could only really geeky technical people launch a podcasting a podcast back then, but it really was only some of the more advanced technical people that could figure out what a podcast was, um, who would actually download the appropriate software to subscribe to a podcast and then have that software that downloaded those podcast episodes automatically. It, it took a lot of work to actually 
get those MP3 audio files onto some sort of portable device such as an iPod or uh, back then there were even, you know, those handheld PDAs and all this other stuff that people tried to put the, the files on. It was very inconvenient back then. However, with that being said, Heather, back in 2005, 2006, podcasting was going like wildfire among the tech people in the world. It, it really was taking off probably about 750 thousand people out there who were just absolutely consumed by podcasting and and couldn't get enough of it. And over time, once once it kind of had pretty much made its way out throughout the entire tech bubble, if you will, it it continued to grow over the years, but it was a slow and steady growth. It wasn't this big huge, you know, up curve, if you will, on the on the charts as far as audience growth. But what happened was when the smartphone revolution started, and specifically, let's talk about the iPhone uh, era of smartphones, and even not even until they actually introduced this thing called the application or the app market. Once they made it to where our smartphones, and the, you know, after Apple created theirs, there was the Android phone, and today's there's the the newer versions of the BlackBerry and the Windows phones. But there are today 1.7 billion, 1.7 billion iPhones in existence today. That's that's how many people are using them. In fact, I just saw a statistic earlier today, and I'm going to pull it up here because um, let's see here. It, I, I well, I don't have it in front of me, but it was something crazy like one in nine people in the world are going to have, or 90 percent of the people age nine and up will have a, a smartphone within the next year or two. So anyway, the reality is, is that with our high-speed internet connections, such as 4G and 3G and LTE networks and stuff like that, now with the press of a button, anybody can find a podcast, subscribe to it, and once they've learned what a podcast is and they found this application, uh, which, by the way, is included automatically on every iOS device, uh, which is the Apple devices out there. Once they have found it and learn about it, they click it and subscribe. And every time you publish an episode, every time I publish an episode, it's immediately pushed out to them. They get a notification. And depending on their settings, they can actually click play and stream it at any time they want. Or they can even tell their phone to automatically download it. They don't have to do anything. Just as soon as they go out, boom, it's already there. So it's never been easier to create a podcast it's never been easier to consume a podcast. And not only that, on the content creator side, the reason why today is the best time than ever is because podcasting, uh, for the very first time after 10 years now, podcasting is starting just now to go big time mainstream. I, I see that all the time. I see that on my own iPhone. You know, I, it, a couple of years ago, I might have had one podcast, but now I've I've probably got I've probably subscribed to forty or fifty. And, yes. And when I'm in the car, it, it, it's a fairly new vehicle, so all I've got to do is climb in the car and press a couple of buttons on in on the car console, and up comes as, as it did this morning on my way to the gym. It was my it, it was you uh, and and your last podcast. And it is so easy. You know, I say that 40 or 50 shows that I'm subscribing to on every subject, any subject. I, I listen to one on scuba diving, on the paleo lifestyle, on, you know, health and fitness, because that's a massive market out there. Um, so in talking about that, let, let's move to niche audiences, because the vacation rental audience is, is pretty much niche you know we're talking about tourists and travelers out there who are looking for this particular type of accommodation which although it's reaching mainstream is is not is not the absolute choice of of everybody still people are still wanting hotels and resorts i was listening to one of your episodes and that's now here's a challenge episode 314 which one was that i'm pulling it up <laughs> right now so i'm going to go to podcastanswerman.com slash 314 and i will be able to tell you it says who would listen to a podcast about wooden boots like, so <laughs> basically it's the story of dan Matson and, and how he created a, book, a podcast called hooked on wooden boats and so he's created a podcast that is 
100% solely devoted to wooden boat enthusiasts or people who like boats made 100% of wood. And and that really is, I, and I'm talking to, to some of these owners and agents at the moment and saying, go and listen to this episode because... He's on, Dan is now episode 149, and and I listening to your episode 314. You were saying who would listen to a podcast about wooden boats? You know, he was talking about getting to episode uh, four, having done two solo episodes and then an interview. And okay, what do I talk about next? And it was really interesting how he goes on in that and said so this is how he he found all his content just by going out and, and talking to that first interviewee who then gave him all the contacts for, for other um, topics. So tell me about the niche market. Do you think there is a market out there for this, this type of topic, the vacation rental topic? I do. I think it is absolutely. It, matter of fact, I, now, Heather, I'm not in your world, but let's just assume that my wife and I ran a bed and breakfast here in Hebron, Kentucky. If I did, I would totally have a podcast devoted to this market and this niche. And rather, now, I think one of the things that you were suggesting, and by the way, I could, if I wanted to, I could have a podcast. My podcast could be a local focused podcast. So basically, I could create a podcast called Discovering Cincinnati or the Northern Kentucky area or whatever. It could be devoted to this geographic area so that people who are looking to visit this part of the world, they, they can hear all of the fun things and activities and I could give them reviews and, and go out to restaurants and review them and all this stuff. And, and anybody who's looking to come to my area they would, and, and, and they're looking for a bed and breakfast, then, then chances are they would not only come just because they're looking for a bed and breakfast to find me, but also they would know that I'm an, I'm an authority on all the things in this area and I can help them enjoy their time here more than any other place could, especially uh, rather than you know, just staying at one of the local hotels. So that is one option. And, and certainly I, I could see that as, as a viable option. But Heather, I happen to know that one of your future questions that you have for me is, well, what happens if, you know, those people are going to find, you know, they're looking for the area in Northern Kentucky. It's not like those people, not everyone is going to consistently come to Northern Kentucky every single year. So how do you keep the, their interest? How do you keep them subscribed to your show? For that reason, I don't know if I was a bed and breakfast owner, if I would go with the whole local area expert approach, unless I was in an area where those people do come, you know, over and over again. There are some places, by the way, my wife and I frequent, we go to the Smoky Mountains quite a bit for an example. Uh, and so I'd probably subscribe to a Smoky Mountains uh, podcast, a Smoky Mountains region podcast uh, run by and folks that own that. So that is that it could be conceivable. But what I would probably do with my experience is I would actually create a podcast that is devoted to um, helping people who are fanatics about bed and breakfast travel around the world. So what I would do is as a bed and breakfast owner, I would network with other bed and breakfast owners in other areas, exotic in all sorts of places, and interview them about their bed and breakfast. Because here's the thing, somebody who comes to stay at my bed and breakfast, chances are when they go visit another location, they're probably going to look to stay at a bed and breakfast there as well because they like that experience. And so that's what I would do. And it would help me network with them. And of course, I could interview them, talk about their bed and breakfast, help send some of the people who have stayed with me. Now they know that they can trust and, and that they're going to like that place when they go to that town or that area of the world. And not only that, but it, it creates goodwill and networking among all of those people that I've decided to network with. And, and of course, they're sending people my way and my audience is getting great ideas of wonderful places. And perhaps all of a sudden, they never would have thought about staying at this one bed and breakfast in Montana that has this one feature that they had no idea anybody ever had offered anything like that. And wow, that was never on their bucket list. But because they listened to my podcast, now it's on their bucket list. And it's not something that I can offer from my bed and breakfast but it's, a, it's an opportunity, a world that I've opened up to them now. And so I've created value for them. And not to mention the fact that, that I may create an entire of audience of people 
who are who love bed and breakfasts, but they an entire audience of people and and a majority of those people may never be in the market to stay at my bed and breakfast, perhaps, but because they are fanatics about bread and breakfasts, <laughs> easy for me to say. Because of all of that, they those folks are going to be doing life with other people who live this lifestyle of travel. And when it comes to Cincinnati, if that ever came up, they're going to say, oh, you've got to go stay with Cliff and Stephanie. That's a really interesting take on it. And it's, um, it's one I hadn't fully thought about, but uh, it, it came up recently when somebody uh, um, mentioned who, who has a, a vacation rental near me. And they said, well, you know, if, if, if I just do the local area, somebody else might do the local area as well. And then, you know, we are all already saturated. And, and she's in an area where geocaching is just incredibly popular. So yeah. we discussed her starting a podcast on geocaching. Yes, that, 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 that is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, so it could be, it could be any topic. If, if somebody is in an area where the, there's, there's canoe routes and kayaking and they, they get into that slow water sports uh, topic, that's something they could come, that they could easily take up as a topic. Exactly, because if somebody was really into kayaking, for example, it's like they, they, they go around looking for new places to kayak. And gosh, if all of a sudden you're creating this amazing contact, content that helps them enjoy their passion for kayaking that much more, and if all of a sudden you're consistently you know, just dropping hints about how beautiful it is to kayak in Great Exuma, Bahamas, right? <laughs> Then by all means, you know, those people are going to add your bread and breakfast in Great Exuma to their their bucket list. They they want to come and and visit you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, as I say, that's that's a really new take on it. Now I've got to, I'm going to go back to my podcasting group and uh, and spread that one because you know we we can start looking at. I was thinking it just really is thinking outside the box, right? It is. And, you know, the, and it, what's interesting is, is I work with uh, pastors of churches quite a bit. And oftentimes they come to me and say, Cliff, I want to create a podcast that's going to promote my church and I'm going to put my sermons online. And that's really no different than saying I'm a bed and breakfast owner and I want to actually put my podcast out there about my bread and be- breakfast. You know, it, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, well, we could do that with the focus of serving ourselves. But what is it about what about it? who we're trying to reach? What kind of things are they passionate about? And how can we, sh- what passion do I share with the majority of the people who, who would come to uh, participate in what I have to offer? What kind of passions do they have that I share with them? And why don't I create a podcast that, that feeds into that passion that is true, it's genuine. It's not really 100% an ulterior motive, how can I get them to come to me? But literally, how can I get out there and get known in front of a large group of people who might be interested in what I have to offer? Uh huh. We'll be doing a lot of brainstorming, I think, from here on in. So, so let let's say we've um, we've we've found a topic, whether it is the local area, because there, obviously there's some areas which really lend themselves to uh, to a, to a podcast on that area because travel is particularly under underserved by podcasting i look onto itunes on the travel category and there's not a huge amount on there i mean i know that lou mongello is is just crushing it with walt disney um and there's a couple on hawaii but not a great deal else out there so so it's still i think it's still a huge potential for for those who are in those hugely popular areas as you say where people like the smoky mountains where people go back to over and over again or exuma as you (laughs) You, exactly. Quite I rightly. Lo- <laughs> by the way, I love Great Exuma. It's a, and I have kayaked in Great Exuma. Oh, it's beautiful. Nine weeks today. I will be there. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that, is the, that is the first place I've ever landed in an airplane, at, at an airport where the plane landed sideways because of the crosswinds on the airport runway. Yeah, that's, that's not so neat. <laughs> Excellent. So what's your question related to this travel focus, this area focus? A lot of our owners and agents are probably going to stick with that travel side um, yeah. of it. So, so I just wanted to move on to well, the te- be- technical side, really. Before you move on, can I just yeah. suggest something? And maybe you've already thought about this, but the interesting thing about a podcast for a bed and breakfast in where they have a podcast that's focused on the local area, 
I, I don't know if you thought about this, but this potentially could be an additional revenue stream for their business. I've often thought about this. If I had a bed and breakfast business in the Smoky Mountains, I would definitely create a podcast devoted to the Smoky Mountain region, all the things that you could do in this area. And obviously the target audience would be people who are coming to or consistently come back to the Smoky Mountains. And hopefully those people will get so much value from my podcast devoted to this region of the world that they would consistently consider staying with us because of how much they've grown to know, like, and trust us through our content. Now, here's the deal. When you go to the Smoky Mountains or you go to these places and you walk in a restaurant, what do you walk in? What's the first thing you see when you walk into every restaurant in these areas? The yep. big rack of brochures. And what I would do as the as the content creator of this podcast, I would probably create maybe 5, 10, 15 episodes, you know, really get some good content, make sure it's quality adds lots of value to the listener, really helps them to understand the region, making sure that it sounds professional and quality and stuff like that. And then what I would do is I would go to all those restaurants and I'd pick out every single one of those advertising brochures and I would go and find the people responsible for spending money on advertising and I would sell advertising spots on my podcast. Great idea. Great idea. Uh, I do have um, one of my colleagues, owners, who's in my my little podcasting group. And we're all sort of starting new podcasts in in the new year, and and she's in Florida on what they call the Space Coast, and um, she she was saying just recently she's got now got in touch with her tourism department, who are saying well they don't have a podcast. This is something that's missing from their marketing mix. So I think, you know, she's seeing this as an opportunity. Absolutely. It's just such a great opportunity. And there's so much potential, I think, out there for, uh, for owners, agents, anybody that's involved in our vacation rental and bed and breakfast business to get out there and, uh, and start this. So setting it up. I know that you want me to talk about I setup. But I, I, do. I, just, I don't want to miss this. <laughs> I, had, I had one more thought that just came up and it is walking tours. You could, create, you could create a podcast of walking tours of the local area where you're at. That is so neat. I have, I have an owner who is in Asheville, and uh, she was talking about setting up driving tours, actually, around mm-hmm. the Ash- yeah. Asheville area, which I think is Smoky Mountains, too. It's, it's that, that sort of um, yep. area. And, and yes, that, that was her idea. So yeah, walking tours, driving tours, it's a bit like the old, you know, when you, when you go to a museum and they, you, you, you have a little cassette player that takes you around different areas and tells you what's on in, in different uh, rooms in the museum. Absolutely. I love it. All right. So setting things up. Yeah. Can't miss this one. And I don't want to, uh, to let you go without talking about this because it was a technical stuff that really drove me away. Back in, and, and as you said at the, um, at, at the top of the show here, that it was very geeky. And I am, you know, the last thing I am is, is geeky. I, I operate the GAMI principle, which is called get a man in. If, <laughs> you know, if there's something I can't do, I will get somebody in to do it. And there wasn't many people, there weren't many people around at that time. But now it's, it's a lot easier. Um, but I'm still finding people saying to me, well, you know, I just don't know where to start. And don't we need all that fancy equipment? And where do I go to get it? So in a nutshell, where do they go? What do they do? Well, the first thing to know is that um, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. You can start with a, something as simple as a microphone, like a USB microphone, and plug it into your computer. It can be that easy. And, and there's free software that you can download and record your audio. Uh, so it doesn't have to be overly complicated. It can be complicated if you if you uh, want to maybe sound a lot more professional, if you want to start doing podcast interviews and all kinds of other things like that. Um, I created a free resource on my website at learnhowtopodcast.com. And this really is a free tutorial. I don't even force you to give me your email address or anything like that. Uh, more than 70,000 people have gone through the tutorial. And in those eight videos, I really do break down and give you a full explanation of all the basics of podcasting. 
Uh, and I talk about e- equipment options is one of those things that I that I you know go into some depth with. So you can see that you could. By the way, you don't even have to have a microphone. You, I could actually take my iPhone and I could hold it in my hand, and with a free application on my iPhone, I could record an interview face to face with somebody and bring it back home and put some music in front of it and put that out as a podcast episode. So it really can be that easy. And, and I talk about all those different options in my free tutorial at learnhowtopodcast.com. I remember listening to uh, one of your podcasts um, a, a couple of years ago, and, and you were testing out different microphones. And one of them, you were just walking down the road, I think, with, with an iPhone, or maybe it was the, the Roland recorder. And I, I don't know if you remember that one. It was, it, you, you just tried out a, a lot of different ways of recording. Yeah. Um, and that, 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 really struck home with me that you don't have to uh, get stressy about getting all this fancy stuff. You have to start somewhere. If you, ha- By the way, it, it, if you have the money to make this an investment and you're super serious about podcasting, then, then I would recommend going a little bit into it and, 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 and you know, wading into the mess. But if it's something that you're just, you know, you're not sure about, then my recommendation is to create a podcast that has nothing to do with your business and really has nothing to do with your area or what you would podcast about if you decided you wanted to pursue this seriously. But just to create something for fun, you could even use a fake name and and play around with some of the free services out there. there just to give you an idea, there is a service called, um, gosh, Podomatic. I would not recommend your professional service be on it. But Podomatic is free, has a free option, I believe. There is uh, Audioboom, B-O-O-M dot com, or might be Audioboom dot F-M. Anyway, there's SoundCloud. There's a bunch of options out there, and you can just play around with podcasting. Just t- test the waters and see if you like it. And if you decide you want to get more serious, then especially if you're going to do this for your business, I would go maybe a small little investment if you can make it. If not... I will tell you that when I started podcasting in December 2005, I spent a total of $35 on a heads, a USB heads style headset that had a little boom mark, microphone off to the side. On a scale of 1 to 10, the audio quality was about a 4, and it did not keep me from getting to the place of where I am today, where millions of people around the world know who I am. That's, that's great advice, and let's just touch on consistency as well because I really did learn the hard way I, I when I was doing your um, A to Z course you talked about the, the sort of wall that people tend to hit at episode number seven but it took me nearly a year to get to episode number seven and then of course I was wondering about you know I've got I haven't got many subscribers I haven't got many listeners and it suddenly hit home that it needs to be consistent because if you want people to hang around, they're going to be waiting for each episode to come out. And actually, since I've been going weekly since January of this year, um, just hit 50 episodes. I've, I've had what, 30, between, I think about 38,000 downloads now, which, which is, I, for me, it's not like huge, huge numbers, but I think for this niche, it's, pretty impressive and it's just because of the consistency um i'm guessing you agree with that absolutely consistency is absolutely critical because here's the deal when when people read your blog post or their video they'll oftentimes giving you give you somewhere between three to ten minutes of their time you're really not going to get much more of that but if you create an audio podcast episode and somebody actually did find you through the podcasting service, I'm not specifically talking about the people who may have clicked on your link and they're listening to it on your website. Those people are still probably only going to give you about three to 10 minutes of your time unless they get hooked and they can figure out what podcasting is and then go subscribe to it. But the people who will actually find you through a podcasting application, find your content, click subscribe, those people will easily devote 20 to 20 minutes to an hour every single time you put out a podcast episode. But they're only going to do that consistently if they can make you a part of their normal routine, the habit of their weekly life. And in fact, Heather, I can tell you right now, there are six different podcasts that I'm subscribed to that I listen to every single week, and it's a total of six hours worth of content. And if any one of those podcast producers goes on vacation for one or two weeks and they're not there... 
I honestly will tell you that I feel like there's a part of my life that's missing. It's- that's the kind of influence that we have in the lives of the people who listen to us. And they want, they want you to be a part of their regular life once they've come to know, like, and trust you. Yeah, and I do that. I, I have half a dozen that I couldn't be without as, as well. Um, one of which is, is yours, and you took a week off. I did, and, and you missed me, didn't you? Something feels off in this world, right? <laughs> it did. Um, you mentioned your learnhowtopodcast.com, which is uh, – that's, that's what I started with. That's how I first found you. Um, it was a great free course. Now, there's a lot of free and paid courses and tutorials around now. How do people sort through – well, yeah. So learnhowtopodcast.com is is the free tutorial I have. And it's really meant to be the foundation for people who want to do this for business purposes. Um, it, it's not meant to be the end all be all. And it's not necessarily meant to be just as a teaser to get you to buy something bigger and better from me. In fact, the really cool thing is, is like I said, literally tens of thousands of people have gone through it. And Heather, I say I get about 20 to 30 emails per month, every single month of people who said, Cliff, I found your free tutorial. And if it weren't for you, I would have never learned. I would have never started the podcast. And here's a link to it. And by the way, those 20 to 30 people have never purchased a single thing from me. And I'm excited by that because I've helped them get their message online and for whatever reason they were a, because they had the technical ability they were able to take the information in that tutorial and run with it and they actually created a podcast and some of them are quite successful as a result of it uh, but there are always people who will go through that tutorial who like yourself says wow this is way too much i really need a little bit more personal handholding and so if if that's the case you go through the tutorial and you don't feel like i've you know what, I, I kind of understand what Cliff's saying here, but I really need somebody to walk me through. I need to be able to ask questions along the way. And that's what my podcasting A to Z or A to Z <laughs> course is all about. It's about you basically get me as your as a almost a personal coach and consultant through the four weeks of you getting that set up. Yeah, I, I valued that so highly. The fact that uh, really any time except Sundays, which we, we all respected, and um, Saturday, by the no, way, I took Saturday. Saturday. Did, yeah, I took Saturday. Saturday. I did take Saturday and Sunday off, but Monday through Friday, you're, I'm pretty much there for you, you from were, morning till night. You were there all the time, and and if I hadn't answered, and you know, the other value I got out of it was actually the um, networking with all the other people on the course, and I'm still in touch with um, with with quite a few of them which is, is, is amazing. And I met a few of them at the podcast movement um, conference. Um, so it was a bit like a, a sort of a mini reunion. So, you know, that, that, that worked on so many levels for me. So when is your next A to Z coming up? Sure. My next course starts on Monday, January 12th, and we go for four weeks. And I do limit it to about 30 people per cl- course. I've had as many as 36 in there. And I do that because I, I really do want to come alongside with you and, and walk with you through the entire step. I mean, literally every step through the process, helping you really define your goals of why do you want a podcast? What kind of format do you want to go with? Uh, who is exactly your audience? How often will you release your content? Will you do a solo show, a guest show, a, a co-hosted show? Will you do interviews? Will it be a mixture of all those things? What goals do you have? And if you and oftentimes people like, well, my goal is this, this, and this. And I'm like, eh, let's get a little bit more detailed. Let's define what success looks like for the show. And oftentimes I get, you know, my goal is to have, you know, 30,000 subscribers by the end of the next 12 months. And I'm like, well, let's talk about realistic goals. <laughs> and so I, I really walk through every single bit of the process. Yeah. Um, as, a, as I say, the, the value to me was was just outstanding so i'm i'm hoping that um that if anybody is interested in that course you know come to me ask me about what what my experiences were was like and uh i will i will set you in the right direction cliff it's been an absolute just outstanding pleasure to have you with me today is there anything else you'd like to add you know, that, that's really it, um, Heather. I just want to encourage people that now is the time. In fact, podcasting is just exploding in the mainstream right now. 
And the one thing that I will tell folks is that if you were to create a podcast in 2014 or even 2015, in 10 years from now, people will look at you as a pioneer in this space. And, and people will be like, wow, I can, the, you were one of the early ones. Even though it's been around for 10 years, uh, the reality is, is what's getting ready to happen over the next 10 years as a result of all these smartphones. And, and you know, Heather, almost in 10 years from now, there won't be a car out there that doesn't come with the stereo with podcasting built into it. So it's exciting stuff. Exciting days. This is the time to get started. Yeah. And I've always wanted to be pioneer woman. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Heather, Cliff. thank you so much. Thanks again, Cliff. We'll talk soon. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Thank you, Cliff Ravenscraft, for sharing so much with us. There's so much of value in that. Um, so I'm going to be obviously including everything in the show notes. Um, particularly the you know the link to the uh, A to Z course, which will be coming up in January. It's quite a hefty investment. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not holding that back, but I think it's worth absolutely every penny if you're really wanting to go into it with no clue about how to how to produce a podcast and come out at the end of four weeks with everything at your fingertips that you need to start. And in fact, you will, if you work at it over the four weeks, as I did, you can even launch your podcast on the day the um, the course finishes because that's the way it works. It, it takes you through step by step from purchasing your equipment, setting it up, organizing, getting your first interview under your belt, just everything. And then if, you, uh, if you're able to publish your podcast while the course is still going on, then you're going to get the critique and the, uh, the feedback as well. It's just such huge value. And I'm absolutely delighted that for listeners of Vacation Rental Success, we'll get a $500 discount on the, the uh, published price of the course. So if you're interested in taking the A to Z course in, in January or any other any other time, I think uh, Cliff does these once or tw- uh, maybe three or four times a year. So if you, uh, if you want to get on to the January course, all you have to do is to use the discount code COTTAGE when you, when you fill in Cliff's application form. And of course, you can email me directly at heather at cottageblogger.com. Ask me any question. We can get on, we can hop onto Skype and, and I can tell you all of, you know, my experience of how the course went and what the value was to me. So it was interesting, you know, when I was listening to that, the word, when I was listening to, when I was talking with, uh, with Cliff, the word mellifluous came to mind. And I just looked it up. I went into the Merriam-Webster dictionary and looked it up. And the full definition of mellifluous, having a mellifluous voice is having a smooth, rich flow. And, and in fact, that's, uh, that, that really does describe Cliff's voice. He definitely has that great voice that, uh, that keeps you pretty much mesmerized when he's, uh, when he's talking in his, in his podcast. And they're really, really worth listening to. Cliff has been, you know, clearly he's been a real inspiration to me and remains a motivational force for me too. There's a lot of other people out there doing the same thing. But to me, I, I think Cliff out, outranks, outshines them all in the quality of the material that he presents. So that's it. Let me know if you're interested. So, you know, having having listened to Cliff there, it, it, it really comes even clearer to me why this is a fantastic medium for you to get into. It doesn't take a massive amount of time. It's a huge amount of fun. And I think the payback, certainly over the next few years, is going to be very, very big. And I love the fact that Cliff mentioned... Um, sponsorship, advertising, that sort of thing, going and getting your podcast paid for. You know, if you produce a a podcast that becomes popular, whether it is in a a niche area like kayaking or geocaching, which are the two things we talked about, or or if it is a location specific, you will probably find it easy enough to find people in that industry who are willing to support it because they're going to get some payback out of it. So whether it's, uh, you know, you're going to restaurants or attractions and getting them to sponsor you or to put some advertisements 
on your website. It's definitely worth a go. I'm definitely going to do that. I'm going to, uh, when I launch Cottage Insider, the podcast, in January, I'm definitely going to be including some advertisements on the site. And uh, I've already talked to a couple of advertisers who are very keen to get on board. So let's see how that goes. So this has been a, um, you know, a standout episode for me. Every, every one, every episode's great. And I love the interviews, love talking with people. This is one I've been wanting to do for a long time. So I'm, I'm very pleased that, uh, that it's, it, it's gone so well. And, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. So once again, as I say every time, if you like the show, then I'd love you to hop on over to iTunes. Just click the, the box at the bottom of the footnote, uh, bottom of the show notes. And, uh, and that will take you directly to iTunes where you can leave us a review. We'd love to have that. And uh, just like to thank you once again for tuning in. It's always a pleasure to have you with me. And I'll look forward to talking with you again very soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.